Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. Today we are reviewing the second episode of The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. I have not looked up their social media. I do not know what's going on. All I know is I've got my water with collagen, a nice skin reaction happening, and I am stoked to finally get to this episode because I have been postponing it for like four days. I'm excited to jump into it. I wanna see what happens. After I finish the series, maybe we'll check up on their social media. You guys told me to do that, but I just kinda wanna go in blind. I wanna enjoy the mystery of who these girls are. And also it helps me sort of have a first impression of them. In sort of judge them based off that first impression. So let's get into it. Getting arrested it was the worst night of my life. I ended up being charged with aggravated assault with three Ooh. years of probation. It has been a challenge going from the scandal to relationship to miscarriage. Okay, so it was a miscarriage. I wasn't sure what was gonna happen with that. Being pregnant again. Oh, our girl, Pregger Preggers. Okay, Um. well, hmm. Okay, let's see who's that by. So I'm gonna write down miscarriage. I'm taking down notes. And then pregnant again. Interesting, I didn't see that coming. Did you and Dakota make a decision together? After I was arrested, Dakota and I like, we actually never broke up. We stayed in our relationship and I think we wanted it to be honest. It might not be the smartest decision in our situation. It wasn't. I was so shocked when I found out Taylor was pregnant. I wasn't. You weren't surprised? Oh. She's been kind of MIA. I feel like she's like separated herself from all of us. I feel like I would if it were me. I can't tell if any of the girls even want Taylor to be around. Like if they even like her enough to have her be a part of the group in the way that she's been. And I, I feel like from the first episode alone to this episode, wow, what a jump in time. But I, I always, I even off that first episode kind of felt like they were almost hoping they would alienate themselves from her in a way. I wonder if they also think they're better than her, which is very interesting. And of course, I don't know. I'm just saying things out loud. I'm just throwing things at the wall here. She had the swinger scandal, had an affair with her husband. Then she had her miscarriage oh. with Dakota, continued breaking it on and off with Dakota. Then she got arrested. Hey, never a good sign. On again, off again relationships. You know how I feel about this. As somebody who went through these toxic cycles in her 20s and now I'm in my mid 30s, don't recommend. Take this as a sign from the universe. This is not your person. It shouldn't be this hard. Relationships, marriage is not hard. Life is hard. And I will just say as somebody who's in a very easy marriage, it is never the marriage that it brings in the stress. It is just life around us. Immigration, different, you know, moving country to country, stuff like that is what's stressful. It's not stressful, the marriage. And I think one of the greatest lessons I could have I learned it from my 20s was that this on again, off again thing that we're doing, it might feel like it makes sense. The chemistry might be there. Maybe it's a physicality thing. Maybe it's a spiritual thing. Maybe it's a connection that you feel like is there, but it's on rocky foundation. The person you're building life with, the person who's going to be with you through Alzheimer's and cancer, old age and diapers, like that person isn't on again, off again with you. And now she's pregnant. I see guys like think with their, that's like Taylor, things with her. I think Taylor thinks with her trauma. I, I will be honest. I've only seen one episode of these girls and it just feels like Taylor is a walking trauma bond and she's just bomb, bond, not bond, bomb. And it feels like every decision she makes is because of trauma. Like she's seeking, you know, understanding. She wants someone to feel she's safe. She wants to be safe with somebody. She wants consistency, but she can't give it to herself because she doesn't she doesn't have that relationship with herself. So for, from a philosophical perspective, I feel like she hasn't done the introspection work to complement her self-awareness to kind of bring her to the next part of her journey. Like she's self-aware that maybe it wasn't the greatest decision that her and Dakota had a baby, but she's not using that self-awareness to get her to be introspective enough, extrospective enough to get to the next like level of self-actualization or introspection or growth or maturity or health or any of the words you want to use in your bubble, whatever word it is in your bubble, she's not getting to that next step. Like, I don't think she protection. thinks about anything. <laughs> See, and they're like making fun of her, right? They're kind of like Mormon, this Mormon group, group of girls kind of mean. Love her, but sometimes uh -huh. I'm like, sweetheart, it's not that hard. Yeah. Is nobody thinking of her as like, an addict or somebody who needs help or i guess this bubble might not offer those tools i want to invite all of mom talk to come to my baby shower i feel like this would be like a good fresh start i had one of my last probation appointments you know nothing's better than after getting arrested for domestic violence or whatever it was technically nothing's better than having a baby right after that the math is mathing wow talk about cycles of uh 
generational curses and trauma and cycles of abuse and like all these other things that just it's so human i'm not gonna go through this again taylor i can't i'm not sure what that means what does that mean like i can't go through this again i'm not gonna do it is she putting down boundaries or is that like an ultimatum i'm not sure which because ultimatums and boundaries are different just like fyi boundaries are for yourself regardless of what people do ultimatums threatens the person to make a decision so you can make a decision and these things are different. I don't give ultimatums. I put down boundaries. I don't ever ask anyone to do anything. I simply state what I will do within my boundaries. And if you can fit into that, great. And if you can't, that's life, right? Because um, I want us to be naturally compatible. Uh, and then within sense, I want there to be a compromise from friendships to relationships. But I think it's interesting that Taylor said she had a wake-up call. Curious how strong of a wake-up call it is. It's put a very... I'd say negative image on mom talk. Something needs to change. We need to get back to what mom talk was. What was mom talk before? Just dancing videos? Like, is that what it was? I just think like, let's change the culture. I feel like ever since the arrest, it's been the complete opposite. And I know for a lot of people, like brand deals have gone down. Sure. We need to make sure that we have a good reputation. It's interesting how business minded they are. Like, that's what's so interesting. I mean, it's got to be a business. Reality TV show is a business. The Kardashians, they are a business ultimately. And even YouTube, like we are a business at the end of the day. So anytime someone's like, oh, this is their authentic life. Like this is their real life. It's, it's your real life in a sense. But how many of us, it's our real life if we know we're doing it for business or there's, you know, there's some element, I guess like your job is your real life. But for some of us, our job isn't our life. Like our job is the thing we do to live our life. So it's kind of interesting. Brands aren't going to want to work with us if they think we're going to jail and throwing stools at a wall. She obviously almost sounds like she wants to take over, which is sort of interesting. Is that Whitney? I think that's her name. It's overwhelming. Like, I feel like right now I just have a lot on my plate and Dakota's like talking about marriage a lot. I'm not fully in. Interesting. Is she really not fully in or is she saying that for the cameras? But then she wasn't really fully on board. Like they were going to break up, which is why I thought it was interesting. Well, I thought they were going to break up. It's interesting they decided to have a baby instead. I'm so scared to like just get hurt, I guess. Ah, uh, yes. Nothing healthier than having a baby with a person you're unsure about. <laughs> I think it's more of a test. Like, are you going to stay here with me through like thick and thin, you know? He's like, you're trying to ruin this. You're going to do it eventually if you keep trying. It's like the self-fulfilling prophecy. No one will love me. No one will stay with me. Nobody loves me enough to stay by me. And then what you do is you test them, you test them, you test them to the point where they have no choice but to leave because at this point you're just being abusive. So you become sort of like a victim of trauma who ends up becoming an abuser, not because you were traumatized, but because the the if you don't heal from your trauma, it ends up creating like a cycle of like a self-fulfilling prophecy for some people in some circumstances. I'm not a therapist. I'm a person. I'm just saying from my own lived experience, one of the reasons why I realized I was being so toxic in my 20s was because I was unable to in a healthy manner live out my life communicate to people in a way that i thought was the best and i wanted to be that person so i knew that i had to like break this like generational you know cycle of miscommunication and sort of self-fulfilling prophecies so it's interesting that taylor is aware enough to again see how she's self-aware enough to have the conversation but not introspective enough to break the curse or to attempt it or Again, I'm waiting for someone to say the word therapy. That's what I'm waiting for. Not that therapy is an end-all be-all like fix. It's not. But it is a great tool if you find the right therapist and the right kind of therapy to help deconstruct this type of stuff. My due date is in six to eight weeks. And I don't know. Um, I'll like ever forgive myself. And that's why I like really pushed Dakota because I don't feel like... I deserve this like happy ending life. And I think that's like something like I learned in therapy. Like, oh, okay. Okay, therapy. Great. I'm writing that down. Let's go. I just like kind of struggle. Um, and I'm like terrified. Her mom just looks so done though. Like, it is hard when you have a family member who, regardless of how many cupcakes you give them, they won't eat the cupcake. Like, I'm not sure that Taylor is a one. I'm not saying that on my level system. If you guys are new to my work, I have a full observational philosophy called the levels. You can links down below. Check it out in the description. But, you know, there comes a point in our lives where we're kind of useless to ourselves and our community. Useless may be too harsh of a word. So you can think of it as like unable to, within reason, have a symbiotic relationship with either ourselves or our communities. And it feels like sometimes Taylor appears that way, but I'm not sure that's true. It feels like she could also just be like a two who's like really struggling with like a lot of other things like trauma and addiction and stuff. 
But it's interesting to see what will happen. Is she able to eat the cupcake? Is she able to take the help? But then is her environment also the reason she's not getting better? Is her mom the problem, um, a part of the problem? Like ultimately we are the problems in our lives, but we are also the people who decide who's our, our family, our connection, our community. So it's Taylor being in this bubble actually serving her. I don't know yet. I don't know. Again, just throwing things at the wall. Oh, sorry, I can't talk. I'm like hurting so bad inside. I know, I don't want you to, you to feel that way. I think that's that was the weirdest facial expression I've seen. What a weird reaction. Please, Lord, make, make me, me the, the biggest, biggest star the world has ever known. Hi. Should we start flying up? Yes. What? <laughs> Please, Lord, make me famous. Please, Lord, make me rich. <laughs> Religious people be funny, bro. We still want to keep mom talk going, and I think it's up to us to keep everything flowing. I have one brand deal like going into- This is kind of like if Kim, the Kardashians had something going on and Kim couldn't be the face of it. It would be difficult. I think Kim and Kylie and Kendall have been the most successful completely on their own, but everyone else kind of, I think ultimately does need Kim to sort of be there to be the face, which is so interesting. Like, wouldn't it? I love branding stuff. I just love watching companies figure out their branding, especially when they're using themselves as the brand. So this is really interesting to me from that perspective. Okay, so I got this offer and it's like, I'm not gonna lie, like the money is really good. 20,000. 20,000. 20. Okay, what? 20. I thought, for what? It's really good money, okay. What is it? Oh, it's the, the it's the adult toy, it's the adult toy, right? Didn't one of the Mormon girls have like an adult toy? Offer for 20K? No? Am I thinking about somebody else? Oh, goodness. It is. It is, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think I saw this on social media and people were very confused by it. P.S. Shout out to my vibrator. Mm -hmm. Just my best friend, truly. Everyone should have a vibrator. Men, women, theys, thems, any, any gender. You all should own a vibrator. It's really amazing. How can something so simple be just so fabulous? You know what I mean? You guys should definitely have one. Please like this video, leave a comment. Let's get let's get to 100K subscribers, you guys, this year so I can get sponsored by vibrator companies because they don't want to work with smaller YouTubers and I got to get big enough to seduce them so we can enjoy the gift of a vibrator, okay? Let's subscribe, like the channel, leave a comment. I'm telling you, we can make this happen. That is a tiny vibrator, which is very interesting. Like how compact it is. Honestly, kind of cool to actually have a Mormon bubble talk about toys i think it's really important to talk about like intimacy between partners so maybe she could spin it that way but i know this was pretty controversial right i don't know I, I think for some secular people there's an insecurity with adult toys and i think for some religious people there's just sort of like a taboo-ness of it because it's somehow between you and god like creating a, a rift like Matt does like a oh that's like not holy that particular way of expressing intimacy okay so what do they want you to do because so okay so literally all i have to do is hold it and take a picture i worry about the people that i grew up with specifically my family yeah this is why with my religious family we have a, a rule don't look me up and i don't talk about work because like obviously i do adult stuff and i like i've been doing nudist stuff for like a decade plus now and the rule is don't google britney and we'll keep it PG when we have conversations about my job. It is strange. You know, I'm lucky that I am not involved in my religious communities I grew up in. I'm lucky that I my family knows I'm not religious. I'm lucky that I'm not trying to pretend to be. Like I literally am not interested in playing some game where I pretend to be religious when I'm not. I think it's interesting that these girls though are still kind of doing that. And I think I'm confused on that. Like they're doing everything but be Mormon basically, but then kind of benefiting from having a show called The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Like how Mormon are you? You know what I mean? If you're basically not being Mormon at all. I mean, Taylor's obviously not doing it, but to be fair, I think she's owning the fact that she isn't adhering to the temple's expectations. I don't know if I'd do it for 20. I'd probably but have to do at least 30. Honestly, I would say that I would probably go back to the sponsor and say, um, I'd love to do this review, but to be honest with you, like I'm putting a lot in jeopardy here. It could really upset a part of my base or something like that. Maybe, maybe, I don't know what it would be the way to negotiate, but you can always negotiate with people. Sex has been such a taboo topic, especially 
within the church for so long. It's like, if we're trying to break the mold and modernize and get to a place of like normalizing things, that starts with us. Yeah. Interesting. So they're trying to modernize Mormonism. Okay. Still not a fan because I don't think it's a real thing. But if you want to make this construct your reality, okay. And just making TikToks. I just love this group of women getting together and having these important conversations. Because of the shame and lack of knowledge, I think a lot of women don't even orgasm. Yeah. I would yep. die. Right. Yep. Oh, we got a hand raised. We got a hand raised. Y'all got to learn your bodies, bro. Spend some time with yourself. This is actually super common um, for lots of people. I think lots of people don't always feel comfortable just like getting to know their bodies. So I would recommend for all of us to spend time with ourselves. My name is Layla Taylor. I'm 22. I got married when I was 19. Me and my husband were then married for three years, but we ended up. Three years and no orgasm. Okay, I'm going to be real. I don't need, nobody needs to be blamed. No fingers need to be pointed, but no one's responsible for your orgasm except for you you have got to advocate for yourself because that means like you're not enjoying yourself like enjoy yourself girl i spend time with myself constantly and i'm married like that's the thing is like even in married life there's still time to spend time alone you know what i'm saying like get both girl and anytime i get close to the feeling of it i get it. scared and i like stop yeah. oh well <laughs> you're not supposed to stop that's the thing you gotta keep going and that's, to be fair, like she's self-aware enough to say, I, I stop myself. Now, is she introspective enough to ask herself why to deconstruct and to find a solution? Two kids, 22, never in my life. I went to a very Mormon populated high school. So I'd be like, okay, what's the one thing that all of my friends have in common? They're all part of the church. So I got baptized on my own when I was 16. Oh. Being black in the church, I have never taken it personally. It's a bit awkward. There's not very many black people in Mormonism that I know of. And obviously they were anti-black up until I think very recently, right? So not surprised there's not very many black people in Mormonism. You definitely do stick out like a sore thumb. Do it for yourself. Don't even do it for him. Exactly, exactly. Do it for yourself. This isn't just about the guy. It's about us too. So it's taboo, but then the second you get married, you're supposed to be this like, star for your husband which is the irony of it all it's like marrying the streets freaking the sheets it's like you want this girl who's virginal but then i really do think that it's not about the virginity part of it it's about how what relationship you have with your body because i hadn't had sex till i was 22 and i think it was obvious that i hadn't had sex but i also think i was like researching and experimenting and i had been like you know obviously in tune with my body since i was a kid so like for me i had learned myself enough to really advocate for myself the first time i had and to be fair, uh, it was a really safe set setting. It was really good. It was like a friend. It was all very good. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think in these circumstances, they're just coming from such a specific bubble. And I left the I left the Catholic religion when I was 19. So she got married at 19. I left the Catholic religion at 19. So by the time I had sex at 22, I was a secularist. I was buying plan B. I was living on my own, renting a room. Like I was, you know, I already been introduced to like BDSM and nudist events. Like I'd already been introduced to so many different things because I was looking for them. I was trying to like find myself. So I can see from her perspective that if you do it this way, it's just crazy to say I had two kids and no orgasms. My name is Jen Affleck. I am 24 years old. Pac's gonna kill me for this one. But Ben Affleck is his second cousin. I am a content creator. My goal was really just to be able to provide for my family. I've always been super comfortable with my sexuality, um, which I definitely think has also gotten me in trouble. <laughs> because I am a conservative and Mormon. I do follow all those rules. I'm not kidding, you inspired me like full like for Brett oh. and I've never oh. done anything Wait, yet. you did it? Yes. And like it you took a fun. picture? Oh, I took so many Wait, pictures. Wait, I wanna see. What's your- <laughs> Literally freaking out over bikini photos. Wait, are they showing her bikini photos or like open leg photos? What's happening? I don't wanna see. No. Oh, she's like legs spread open. Oh, we're really oversharing in this group. You know what? I love a close friendship. Here we are, a group of women in mom talk who can inspire other women to not be ashamed to use a sex toy, I think is very empowering. I do too. I think they should do it. I'm on board. Break those generational curses. This is why it's so hard to break a generational curse because you got to stand out from the family. The family might get upset with you. The family is all about keeping the status quo. I will say this about Utah. It is one of the most beautiful states I've ever been to. I mean, look at these mountains. 
one of my most favorite states that I've driven through. I've done multiple road trips on my own, traveled around the U.S., really had a great time. And Utah was by far definitely one of the most beautiful places I went to. I'm very excited for this next step. One, we have a child on the way, and I feel like I really just want to try to move forward, heal, and really work on our relationship. I know you guys prefer marriage before moving in. It's so funny, like, you're already having a baby with him. Like, that's, I think, the irony of it all is sort of like, this is an adult person, and we talk about maturity and growing up and making good decisions, and it's just so interesting. And I'm not saying, like, I haven't been here. I mean, in my 20s, I had birth control. And in my 20s, I would take plan B. So to be fair, I think I was technically actually more prepared to have um, sex because I didn't, you know what I mean? I used contraceptives. But it is sort of interesting, like the way we'll live with the live with people. I've lived with people that I wasn't that I was pretty sure I wasn't going to marry. But, I, you know, we had to test it out. And that was not unnecessary in my 30s, technically, like. I was more than sure I was going to marry my partner, whether, whether we had lived together or not. Though technically, my partner and I did have a month of living together because he came from Europe to America to take care of me during my diagnosis period um, for chronic health issues. And he stayed a month in Arizona with me. So we did live together for that month, technically, and we got engaged. Uh, we just got engaged. He came, stayed with me, and then basically the la then I went to Europe and I lived there and that was my life. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting, I suppose, this idea of like, we're going to make a baby. We're going to live together. Not sure if we're getting married. It's just, you know, life goes that way sometimes for some people. But in terms of preventative care, I think this is a situation you want to prevent. I don't think this is a good decision. I think they're doing the best they can do in the context of the situation. But I think this is a situation you would want to avoid in the future. I'm not supportive of it. Why do you have to rush it? Because we're having a baby. I know, but that doesn't matter. You'd rather me do it alone. Yeah, that's the choice you made when you got pregnant. Interesting. You'd rather I do it alone. Yeah, honestly, kind of like a little bit, not literally. But just because you make a baby together doesn't mean you need to be together. But also it depends if they're if they're not moving forward in the relationship. I do think living together is probably not necessary. But living close by and co-parenting would probably be best. But that's interesting because they're not sure if they're going to be together. Hmm, what would be the most efficient solution here? Yeah, it just depends if they're going to be if they're going to be together, live together. If they're not going to be together, co-parenting would make more sense because I wouldn't want personally, I wouldn't want you in my space. Like I'd love the hey, help i would love co-parenting but like i don't need you in my space especially since if we're not together it might get awkward with you dating other people being married to other people in our religion marriage is like essential oh my god what does your religion have to do at this point taylor is like an addict d like dv like she what do, what is your religion what does the religion matter at this point your girl got a record your girl pregnant your girl got problems like so funny i can't tell is this for the camera you be serious we believe like it's a sacred thing that's what me and your mom have tried to teach you the church teaches that we shouldn't live with a partner outside of marriage you already got divorced you know at a young age and then you bring dakota in this when you don't know if he's a and she already has two kids from her previous marriage obviously like her parents okay so two things happened her parents either raised her very poorly with bad communication, neglect, something, or they raised her with the with none of those things, and Taylor just went off the deep end because Taylor is making so many bad decisions in a row. Something is going on. Like that's what I'm so interested in. Is like if you're making this many bad decisions in a row, this should be like a signal to your brain. Hey, something might be wrong. Like significantly wrong with me. I should stop doing anything permanent. Nothing good happens after 2 a.m. Do not get a tattoo when you're drunk and certainly do not get pregnant before you're sure if you want to be with this person. I don't want a revolving door of men attached to my daughter and to my sure. grandkids. Having this baby out of wedlock, you guys can be mad all you want, but he's moving in and he's going to help me with the baby. Is that him? Like, I agree with this. I think humans, I'm going to be honest, I think 99% of people shouldn't be having babies the way they have babies. I think people are too confident in their ability to parent and too many of us are in therapy because of it. But also I can see why it brought a lot of people joy. Like I wonder if Taylor's parents really wanted to be parents or if they just were doing it because it was a part of their religion. Hey. Hi. How's it going? Here, I'm going to help you bring some boxes. You don't have to, baby. Yeah. He's so cheerful. Okay. I, I mean, I seem to like him already. He seems sure that he wants to be in the religion, though he's not really adhering to it very much but he's sober which is good he's got a good personality i wonder if he's a good person i don't know i mean everyone's kind of a good person but like we all have problems i wonder what 
Dakota's story is. He doesn't have anything, no couches. Dirty clothes. Yeah, I didn't know your parents were even gonna be here. Do they need help? I think it's funny that they, he didn't go in and talk to the parents, that he's still like getting boxes. Uh, I come from a culture where like you would go in, greet people first, then you would proceed to do the thing you're doing. Okay. Seriously, do you need any help? We can I don't grab know, something. I think we're good. He doesn't no, yeah. have a whole lot. Uh, like I have more, but. So first of all, you knock up my daughter. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. And then, Dude, hey, and that then, was an accident, okay? What, you tripped and fell? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Awkward. Moving in. <laughs> That's shocking. Just found out, I know. Uh, at least they're like laughing, I guess, and joking about it. It's awkward. Knock up girls. Every, no, see, everything we did completely opposite. He's a bit of a puppy dog, isn't he? He's a bit of a golden retriever with an addiction, but at least he's sober. Realistically, we would have liked to have done it. The traditional way. The traditional way. Given our situation. What was the situation? The situation that was avoidable? I love your daughter. Like, I, I love her a lot. And we align a lot on what we want in our future together. So, yeah. <clears throat> which makes it really nice. We but. talked about that, like even just like religion, I guess as simple oh. as like, I wanted someone in the church to marry again. And he wanted the same. Yeah. Interesting. Are they both the fallen away Mormons who like found each other? Because that would be a good matchup. But I guess the hesitation from the parents is that neither are like very practicing. Right. So are they that's kind of a good matchup, though. I it's funny. I my partner didn't grow up religious, but Croatia is a Catholic country. So I kind of moved to a country that was very Catholic, which is kind of nice because there is a lot of my life that is formed by Catholicism. And the fact that I was raised really Catholic, the fact that my parents are very, very, very Catholic. They talk very similarly to her parents in a way where it's like marriage is sacred and sex is sacred and babies should be. Da, 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 da. So, uh, yeah, it was kind of cool to move to like a Catholic country, which again, I have not gone to church here. I'm not looking to go to church. I am not religious. I'm not interested in being a religious. Um, my partner and I are very strictly non-religious, but it's still, it's kind of cool to have some connection to my roots because Catholicism did form much of my personality. Since the arrest and my pregnancy, I feel like I have changed spiritually. I have really looked at like what's important, my priorities. I want someone like to go to church with when we go to church. Like I don't want to be in a relationship where like I'm taking my kids alone and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just really wanted that like, and you have usually the same morals and values, I feel like, or do we always follow them? No, but we're pretty aligned yeah. with that in that way. Being pregnant and recommitting and trying to go back to church is not the typical Mormon thing to do and most wouldn't and I feel like they'd be a little bit more shameful and I do have those feelings anxiety fear of going back in and being judged however I still love our faith and really want to okay. make an effort to go okay interesting so she's gonna okay she's gonna hey valid I I know I'm pretty secular but I just want to say like if you're religious like you have the right to be religious if that's what makes you joyful then that's good if Mormonism is Taylor's calling, then I hope she finds solace in it. So we are just gonna try. Okay. I think that when you're pregnant and you're bringing a life into the world, you need to be really considering marriage. It's really not that different, you know? Those who love and support you will be there. Yeah. And I guess that can kind of give you an idea of like who cares and who doesn't. I do feel like you've done a great job at taking accountability for like things from the past and like what you've done. Yeah. But I do think that you take all of the accountability and you act like it's all you. And then like Dakota looks like this angel sent from heaven who's uh. like this perfect person when he's not. Like I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I worry because of like what I've seen him say to you. Oh, what? Me and Michaela went to this event. Taylor shows up and then her ex walked in and immediately Taylor was like stressed. Dakota was freaking out. He basically was saying like, F you, you're nothing slut. <gasps> what? Right when I said he's a golden retriever, right when I said, I wonder if he's a good person. <gasps> what? Uh, and Taylor was sitting there like shaking. She what? doesn't deserve that. I just think that he's not treated you the way <gasps> you should be treated. What? Oh, this changes things, girl. See, see? Ooh, damn. Gosh. I can see that you were like shutting down and you were so anxious. And I was yeah. like, what's going on? I just think that yeah. he's not treated you the way you should be treated. Okay, shout out to her friends. If it's true and they're not trying to ruin her relationship and 
he's genuinely like slut shaming her shout out to her friends you know letting her know because you know there's nothing harder than watching your friend like in an abusive relationship or a toxic toxic relationship or in another bad relationship that's gonna you know what i mean i know your friend you're like taylor's responsible for who she picks of course but also i don't want her to get blindsided because no one in her life said hey this guy who appears to be a puppy dog he's toxic like don't be with somebody who slut shames you. But I also feel like things have gotten so much better. Like what has changed? Like he's being less toxic or? Both of us are being less toxic. Okay, good accountability because the truth is, is like they're both toxic, but it doesn't change the fact just because two people are toxic doesn't mean that it's not right or wrong. Like it's not good. If he's slut shaming her, that's not good. And it doesn't matter if she's being toxic. We're always responsible for what we do, regardless of what other people do. But at the same time, there's a reason why toxic people attract toxic people, right? How so? Just like with the addiction or just like in the relationship? Everything. Two weeks before she told me she was pregnant, she called me basically saying, I want to get out of this relationship. Oh my God. I don't know how to get That's what I thought. I thought they were going to break up. And I feel like I really gave him the benefit of the doubt, but I haven't seen any pro. She's got a funny smile to her. Like she smiles while she talks about something serious. So it's kind of like weird to read her facial expressions, but I think she has good intentions. I think, I don't know. I only know what I saw in the past and that like pisses me off. Sure, there's been a lot, I will say. Yes. I can honestly say there's been so much progress. Do you think I should just do this on my own? Like you'd rather be, have you be happy without this person than miserable with them just for the baby. Obviously, healthy co-parenting is better than forcing a relationship. Like healthy co-parenting is always a goal over staying in a relationship for the baby. I do appreciate that she's blunt and always been honest. I know she wants the best for me, but at the same time, it's really hard to hear and accept as well. Okay, I like that, that it's hard to accept as well, because it is hard. I mean, when I was in my on again, off again relationships, my friends would tell me, they'd be like, this is not your person, dump them, oh my gosh. And then they would put up with them because every time I'd get back together with them, they'd be like, okay. And I tried multiple times in multiple relationships, boys, girls no matter who i was dating it was like i was trying to figure myself out in my 20s and it took me a really long time to figure out who i was so the next people that i dated after that were actually people that i could either one date and it was done or i could actually get to where i am now which is married and i didn't get there without having to learn who i was my values where my boundaries were regardless of how much i love a person like that's not enough for me to get married you have to be compatible with values and we have to have that chemistry be in love. Like being in love is great, but what's being in love without the values? Comp like we have to be compatible. So that way we can make it 90 years into marriage, Alzheimer's, cancer, you know, who knows what's gonna happen. But like, I, and I'm in the kind of marriage where like we are integrated. Like what is mine is theirs, what's theirs is mine. Like we are, every we share everything. There is no like, you know, there is nothing that isn't ours. So. You know, that's a big commitment. So you got to do it with somebody that you really, f you trust as a consciousness, right? Family is very conservative. My family's family is very conservative. Of course, it's going to weigh in to my decision whether or not I'm going to promote a vibrator. I got a really juicy brand deal for a vibrator. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just to promote it on my social media. Why would you do that? Oh, well, one, the money is really good. <laughs> And two, and two, I feel like I can go about it where it's like empowering. Hmm. You don't think it's like Strangers. empowering? Hmm. No. Oh, she was like, <laughs> no, canceled. <laughs> Do you feel like that like matches your platform though? Cause you're all like, oh my God, kids, home making yes. vibrator. <laughs> You know what? Depending on how she did it. Depending on how she did it. I just think a lot of that is private, personal. Yeah, this is like my conservative family similar. Like, oh, this is private and personal. It's between you and your husband. And like, you know, it's kind of interesting how the language is so similar. Like, I didn't want it to be shunned. It's like, if you need this tool to enjoy intimacy with your partner more, like there shouldn't be shame around it. Do you feel like there is with the church? Probably, yeah. I think it's a personal thing between you and your partner. Oh, yeah, I heard that before. What if you were single? I'm not sure how I feel about that. Oh, uh, see? Nobody ever thinks about what, what if you're single, bros. It's like everyone always thinks like, oh, so this between you and another person. What about the relationship you have with yourself? But then if you're in a religious bubble, mass is usually 
consider taboo. I think when you're seeking pleasure, it can just get out of hand. Oh, I mean, sure. Like that's why you have to have boundaries. You have to have value. So when temptation comes knocking, you make the right decision. Growing up, even in young women's or girls camp or young women's activities, like whenever we would talk about the law of chastity or sex, like it was always no, 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 no. I even had this sex talk before I got married to Connor and I was a virgin. I had to figure it out on my own. Oh. It was a conversation that was never had. So we both just went in this blindly. I remember at your shower that your friends threw you. Yeah, the bachelorette party. I mean, you had to know, so you guys had penis cookies. I was kind of like, what is going on? I, I had just had another baby. She was a toddler, cut me some slack. Damn, bro, talk about like, Neglecting your responsibility as a parent. My parents neglected their responsibility as a parent too. Obviously my parents also, because they're religious, similar thing, you know, my mom had 10 kids. They were busy growing a family, but also the way they gave talks were so like comedic in comparison to what they should have been. And I do think this is the difficult part about parenting. Like everybody wants to be a parent, but nobody wants to parent. And it's very frustrating. So this is also a part of breaking that generational curse is I'm going to be the parent that educates my child. And I think that's what uh, Whitney is trying to be, is to be different than her mother. Because at the end of the day, it was good enough in terms of the basics, but it wasn't good enough in terms of even close to what would be the ideal. Not that we're aiming for the ideal because no one's ever going to be an ideal parent. But like even now for her just to double down and say like, well, I, cut me some slack. I was having babies. I was busy. It's like, yeah. That's the part of the generational curse we're going to break is when our kids come to us and say, I really felt like I was neglected. We don't say, cut me some slack. I was busy neglecting you. <laughs> Obviously, you figured it out. Jeez, this is so parent, con certain parent conversations. This is like a script. It's almost like fake, but it's not. It's just our life. Like, it sounds like a fake conversation. Your kid comes to you as an adult and says, hey, like you didn't teach me to do these things and I had to learn the hard way. And they just go, well, cut me some slack. I was busy. You figured it out. It was fine. I did my best. You would think at this point it was like a fake script, but nope. Real life is stranger than fiction. And it's hard because, you know, my mom was raised in the church and her mom didn't talk to her about right, it. Right. We just never did talk about it. Generational curses, girls. This is what I'm saying. Great example of a generational curse right here so important on why we have to break it at least for myself you don't have to you don't have to add that into your life but for me i think it's really important and as you guys know i want to break generational curses by not having a child knowing i'm too sick unprepared and honestly in this economy god bless you girl god bless everybody who's having a kid in this economy but like I'm not interested. And I know everyone says, oh, God, we'll find a way. You'll find a way. You'll make it work. I'm going to peace with peace and love. I'm making it work now. OK, I already feel the struggle being chronically ill and all that stuff. I don't need on top of that a child in which, you know, I will not sleep last night, guys. I slept the whole night and didn't get up once. And I was like amazed. I like woke up this morning. Like, did I not pee in the middle of the night? Like, I am literally so used to getting up, waking up every two hours in my sleep in pain, having to go to the bathroom, whatever is my problem. And last night I slept through the whole night and I was like shocked this morning because that's how rare it is. It is so rare for me to sleep the whole night. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like an amazing moment. We have to talk about this moment. Now imagine I had a kid. It's like with peace and love, our parents don't prepare us, don't raise us, and then can't figure out why we didn't just have a kid and figure it out the way they did. Because girl, I grew up way too informed that I had to do myself, by the way, I had to be informed myself, I had to go to the internet, I had to read thousands of books. I had to read thousands of books just to even have an attempt to break this generational curse. And I don't blame my parents. I don't think you should blame anybody. I think instead you should learn from their mistakes. And at least I know I'm doing that. If I could go back in time, I would check that off of my parenting list to make sure that I asked if there was anything that you wanted to know that you didn't know. Okay. Okay. That's nice. Oh, I love you, mom. This is great now, if you were wondering. Oh. And you know what made it better? Toys. And that right there is your seller. Ooh, that'd be a great commercial. A Mormon girl and a husband who don't know what they're doing and they're fumbling in bed, can't figure it out. Here's a little help. Can't figure it out. Here's a like a, ooh, that, ooh, but, ooh I should go into marketing. Yes, oh my God, they're like fumbling. It's like, they don't know what to do. They don't know, it's like, it's okay. Relax, sit back and let blah, 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 do the work for you. And it's like, <laughs> I wish my mom had talked to me about it, but I'm so happy that she's listening now. It can be viewed in religion as like disgusting, but times are changing. 
It's the new generation coming in. Let's go. I'd love to see it. What a great episode. Yes, girl. Let me just tell you how taboo vibrators are. I have so many stories I could tell you, but growing up, whether it was secular bubbles or religious bubbles, the taboo around vibrators, people's insecurities, men's insecurities, and people being like just so insecure around a toy is such a waste of just like, it's just such a waste of an opportunity for intimacy. Mm. How was uh, Macy? Didn't she go to the flower shop with her? It was good. We kind of just caught up. She asked about how we were doing. I'm like, Oh, she's still talking shit. Hmm, interesting. Like always? No. Yeah, she that's does. all she does. She doesn't like me. Maybe there's a reason. She's been the one friend that I've opened up to about things. So she's, of course, just- No, 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 no. She's petty. I'm sorry. Like, like there's a difference. Like, I've opened up to my friends, too. Taylor, she doesn't like I any picture you post of us. Like, she's so petty. She won't even like the picture. It's, it's hard to like the picture when you know your friend is in a toxic relationship. Like it is, this is, this is the struggle that I think all of us will have at one point in our life. And I hate being in this position of like, how do I celebrate my friend's relationships when I know they are suffering in them? It's hard. It's hard. And I never know what the right thing to do is. Like, it's hard to know what the right thing to do is, but hope for the best, I suppose. Who does that? Sorry. That's weird. I don't know where she seems like she, well, it's only weird because we're used to turning a blind eye to toxic and abusive relationships. It's only weird because we're supposed to pretend like nothing bad is going on. It's only weird because we're supposed to be fake. It's Himalayan salt. Yeah. But so it's supposed to be really good for your immune yeah. system. So it's like anytime my kids are sick or if I'm sick, like I'm like, uh, we need to go to yeah. a salt cave. What? Wait. So they actually do go somewhere when they're sick rather than staying home. They play in the sand. I've never heard of this. Okay, wait, what are you wearing? The Taylor's baby shower. I don't know if I'm gonna go to that. Why? I don't have that kind of relationship with her. We've cultivated this relationship online, but- Interesting, oh, interesting. Cause last episode they had that whole dinner lunch thing, but this is 11 months later. Mm, okay, interesting. We don't have one in real life, and I don't even think she'd care. The whole time I've known her, it's always been give, 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 and it's never been reciprocated. I doubt Taylor is very good at being a friend, if I'm gonna be honest. She doesn't seem to be one at all. I want to lead Mom Talk back in the direction that it was originally founded on. Interesting that Whitney is kind of challenging Taylor in a way, and I wonder if she wants to be the next, like, the next one in charge, like, the next one who's like, this is my Mom Talk. I wonder if she wants to be the new Taylor. The friendships were torn apart because of what Taylor was saying. Online, it looks like we're all the bestest of friends. It's like, but we're not. All she cares about is herself. I genuinely feel that way. I feel that way too, to be fair. And I actually do think if Whitney's here to break generational curses, she should sort of take over because Taylor's not paying attention to anybody else but herself. I do see in Taylor that type of personality that isn't a team player, that is going to struggle being a part of a community in a real way without having this center of attention on herself. And I, I would find Taylor to be an unreliable source of positive symbiosis. So I would definitely navigate away from her. If I was them, I think Whitney's actually right here. Mm -hmm. By the end of the series, am I gonna love Whitney the best? Even though she's with Connor, who I think is, it's offensive, these men, I think, who go through these journeys of like temptation. And oh, you guys did tell me that Connor was having a sexuality journey. Like, apparently it was like gay related stuff on the internet, which by the way, as a queer person, be gay, bro. Like at the end of the day, if your religion isn't allowing you to be yourself in a particular way, you should question that religion, not your sexual orientation. Okay. And so we should have conversations about that. But again, if religion is what makes you happy, you do you. But yeah, I wonder if at the end of this, Whitney is here to break those generational curses, including the generational curse of the TikTok expectation of sort of, but then see, this is why business is so difficult with friendships, because the truth is, is like business is business is business. You know, we just watched the WWE series on Netflix about McMahon and something that's so clear about him is like he's business, business, business. I think, you know, when I think about who people are in the story, if you're business, business, business at the expense of everybody else and you're here for the business to grow, I think it's really hard to have that relationship with family and friends. And I'm not sure if mom talk is more about friendship or mom talk is more about business. And I think I'm confused on which one comes first. And then since all these women are the breadwinners of their family, which they said earlier, I can see why everyone is very worried, especially since they're all like pretty wealthy at this point. 
I can see why everyone is deeply concerned about the success of that continuing. This is definitely typical Whitney. She will have problems with somebody, have tension, and she just wants to avoid it rather than to talk to them. Every oh. time we're together, she has to create a TikTok and it has to make sure that like, she's shown as the queen bee and we're all like, these girls who kiss her ass and like yeah. her pee and I'm like, I'm not, I'm done with that facade. Yeah, but that's kind of like the Kardashian reality as well. It's like somebody is the it girl. Taylor has, a, Taylor has something about the way she looks that makes her stand out. But Whitney kind of does a little bit more, a little bit, not more than Taylor, but a little bit more than the other girls. I do wonder if Taylor, for some reason, just has like that it factor, like why Kim Kardashian and not Chloe? There's just something about the person. That's why you, you, you have to have like, OK, just going back to the WWE series we watched yesterday, like people have the charisma or they don't. Hulk Hogan can be turned into a character. The Rock was able to be turned into a character. John Cena eventually was able to be turned into a character. But it's very hard to know if you have the it thing. That's the thing about business that's so hard is regardless of how much you like a person, if they don't have the thing, then you're not going to turn them into a sort of like personality. So does Taylor have that thing? It seems like she does, obviously. Does Whitney have the thing? You might just. I have distanced myself from, you know, all of my friends. I don't know who's going to show up and who's not, but I do want them there for me. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, she wants people to be there for her, but she also is so good at distancing herself from people. It's hard. It's hard. It is difficult, especially if she wants everyone to act like everything is normal and they haven't had the chance to talk about it one-on-one. -on -one. I think this is a weird social situation for everybody, probably. I wonder if they, like, she obviously talked to some people one-on-one, -on -one, but I wonder if she's if she's implying she hasn't talked to a majority of them, because then that's super weird. Like, oh, we haven't talked in 11 months since my arrest. Also, I'm pregnant. Also, come to my baby shower. Also, please be there for me. I'm like, anxiety attack. And what's funny is like, Taylor does have people who are there for her. Her parents keep showing up for her. And I, her mom's not a perfect personality here, but her parents at the end of the day keep showing up for her. And I think that's important to recognize. Despite my issues with Dakota, I know it's important to be there to show up for Taylor for her baby shower. She has gone through so much in the last year. I want to make sure she feels loved and supported. I think when Taylor sees us a group of girls rallying around her, she'll be more excited and happy to come back to mom talk so we can all start making videos again. And I just like he's going to be such a sweet dad. He is. He's going to be really cute. <gasps> what was what? that? Nothing. I think he'll be a great dad. The baby daddy part is where... I think we worry a little bit. There's just like stuff from the past I think still bugs me. When we were at that event, I was saying like, F you, like, I think so like you're an F thing four or something. Ooh, interesting for her to have this conversation here. Mm, always messy when people are willing to have the conversations like at the events. Do you guys know where Whitney is? Oh, is Whitney not here yet? I, I don't so. know. Oh. Fashionably late. <laughs> so I was with her and she's not coming. <gasps> Wait, what? Oh. Yeah. Oh, did she tell her she's not coming? No, and I told her maybe she should, but she said that Taylor's probably not even gonna notice. She should at least send her a text. I feel like this is sending a message to Taylor that she does not wanna be friends and she does not care about Taylor. I mean, I do think that's what she's trying to communicate. Can I get a pic with all of you girls? Yes. Is everyone here? Um, I think so. Whitney, where's Whitney? Oh yeah, Whitney's Oh, not here. I don't know if she's coming. Guys, what do you really? mean? Yeah. Did she say she wasn't coming? Um, I think I guess she told Layla last night she couldn't I come. I, don't know. I honestly you think know why. Why isn't she coming? I'm. I. Wait, wait you're not coming? You're like no. the worst liar ever. I know. Just be honest. Oh, that's sad. She just Layla says knows. I don't know. You guys don't have a friendship, so she felt like she didn't need to come today. Oh. Because you guys don't have a friendship. Yep. Oh, well, that's news to me. I don't uh, want to be the one to have to bring it up. Shoot the messenger. I was just hoping you wouldn't notice, so I wouldn't have to that say. That she's anything. not here. <laughs> Ooh, social situations. Yeah, I think this was a mistake on Whitney's end, but I think it's hard to break up friendships. I think people are really bad at ending friendships. I think people are very bad at ending things. I mean, as we saw with Dakota and Ty Taylor, they're very bad at ending things before they escalate. So I think Whitney made a mistake here in the way that she decided to go about this, for sure. The tension between Whitney and Taylor is very tangible with them at all times. 
it's like you're either team Taylor or you are. See, Taylor has a thing. When I see her on the TikTok, I want to watch it more than when I see Whitney on the TikTok. And I don't know why, which is weird because I know I think Whitney's more attractive, but I think Taylor, something about the way Taylor looks, my brain goes, oh, what's that? It's the same way with the Kardashians. Kim Kardashian catches my eye. I think Kylie's more attractive, but not really because Kim is gorgeous, but I am more into Kylie. Did I mention Kendall earlier? Kendall's also very beautiful, but see less my type. I noticed Kendall less than I noticed Chloe. I noticed Courtney less than I noticed Kim. Oh, I'm so good. Look, oh my God, I can't believe I know their names. So <laughs> I'm a genius. I didn't even realize I knew their names, but yeah, like they, they look different to me, but they, they, the way they, my eye, Kylie captures my eye the most. Like every time I see Kylie, I look Kim, I look, but yeah, but they still capture my eye in different ways. Like Chloe's really built a brand for herself. I know Courtney's, I think moving away from things. I'm not sure, but with these girls, Whitney stands out to me for sure. But Taylor really stands out to me. And I don't know why this is why branding is so interesting. What makes one person have the it thing versus somebody else? And everyone has an it thing. Chapel Roan, her thing ended up being her aesthetic because Chapel Roan was singing Pony Club um, way before now. But if you go back to old Chapel Roan, it wasn't enough for people. So you have the you can ma you manufacture the thing. It's just the way you manufacture it. It's not like you're born with the thing, even though some people have more charisma. You build the brand. So Chapel Roan built the brand. All y'all didn't discover her until now because she didn't have the thing for you to discover her, which was the aesthetic you were attracted to. So the question is, is it her hair? Is it the drag? Like, what is it about Chapel Roan that made you like her now versus the fact that she's been on YouTube singing those songs for 10 years anyways, but no one found her? Because for me, it's the aesthetic. When you go back to old Chapel Roan, I wouldn't have clicked on those videos. That aesthetic was not interesting to me. Her aesthetic now, definitely interesting to me. So is it just aesthetic? Is that what makes the difference? And is Whitney building to become that thing? And why does Taylor naturally have it? Interesting huh or is it natural i guess it isn't natural maybe it is i don't know i don't know what taylor was doing originally i don't know how much she's changed but that's the question i would ask myself actually can you guys let me know in the comment sections too if you're a chapel Roan fan why did you start following her now and not before if you did if that's how it went for you does taylor make you do you have that feeling around taylor where you like you want to watch her more than you want to watch any of the other girls i'm not sure what do you guys think? Tell me, tell me. I feel like they both love the spotlight in different ways, but they both have this very alpha female energy. Yeah, it's like they're fighting for who's the main character. Yeah. Taylor's mom called Whitney. <gasps> what a mom move, bro. I would die if my mom did that. What is going on? I don't know. I think that's more of a conversation between me and Taylor. Good boundaries, good boundaries. Okay, so good boundaries on Whitney's part because I don't think that's necessary to have that conversation with Leanne. Interesting, of course, Layla had to say what was going on because they're all friends and I get that. Interesting to see why the need to fight for the main character is so important. Probably because Whitney wants to take mom talk in a different direction and probably because Taylor isn't emotionally available to do that. I'm gonna assume that's kind of the part that makes sense to my brain at least. I loved this episode. Breaking generational curses, so good, so healthy. Talking about branding, and making sure your job lasts, so important. So many people in social media have an average of seven years of a lifetime because they burn out, because they're not here for longevity, because they're not thinking about the company, and because they were just kind of lucky that their life gave them this opportunity. But it's really hard to capitalize on it, and it's hard to keep it going for a long time. So it will be interesting to see if Taylor's personal mistakes and lifestyle are the reason she actually falls off on social media, or the reason she actually maintains. And then same with Whitney and the girls. I'm going to be so interested to see where they are after this. Because that will be interesting. Ooh, how have they been doing on social media to this day? I'm so curious now. Uh, yeah, because how many big YouTube channels? How many big TikTok channels? How many big people do you know online? Who have like millions of followers and nobody watches them anymore? And it, th there's a reason for that, right? There's a reason some brands make it 30 years. And the reason some brands make it a year or two. And it's a combination of so many things, but trust me when I say like mental health plays a role, even for myself, my career on YouTube has been like dec like a decade long, but truly was always, I was bad at it because my mental health just wasn't where it needed to be. Once I got my mental health squared away, work has just been so much easier to maintain because your mental health plays into so much, your trauma plays into so much. So very cool episode. Love to see breaking generational curses. I hope to see some good communication moving forward because I didn't appreciate the way I think Whitney did things in terms of not showing up to the shower. Kind of awkward, 
really hasn't been that long, you know, 11 months since the DV ep- episode. So it feels kind of like there could have been a conversation there, but I do think the world doesn't give people an opportunity to break off friendships in a healthy way. That makes sense. I do think the world struggles to communicate and comprehend one another. And I do think it's really hard not to have these conversations without it getting muddled with all of the hurt feelings and miscommunication and sort of like resentment that's been built up over time. Right. It sounds like Whitney might have some resentment or bitterness. Uh, What's a word? Resentment, bitterness, annoyance, uh, some negativity towards Taylor that might make it hard for her to really humanize Taylor. And also Taylor is very um, self-centered and self-obsessed and just so focused on herself that it makes it hard for her to understand that she's so negatively impacting everybody. I know she cries. and I know she feels her feelings, but I'm not convinced that though that at this point that those tears represent a true understanding of the way she's impacting others, uh, which it makes sense for the circumstance she's in. All right. Excited to watch episode three. Thank you for being here. Please like and subscribe and I will see you guys next video. Bye. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.